way of escape. That's all the psalm is trying to get us to see that God is worthy of all the praise. That's why you got some folks to tell you, oh, let my last breath be a praise for God. I praise God on my sick bed. I praise God when I'm up and I praise God when I'm down. Are they trying to trick somebody? Are they trying to be holier than thou? Are they trying to be super sanctified? No, they have a relationship with God and they understand who God is. And they understand when God allows something to happen in their life that God will not abandon you, that God will not leave you, that God is right there. It took me a little while to begin to understand that God is the one that keeping me well, I'm trying to get out of the mess that I'm in. And if he wasn't keeping me. See, it's the enemy desire to overwhelm us, to sift us like we. But God said, no, they belong to me. And there's something about praising God. And people used to say, praise your way out of it. I said, what are you talking about? Praise your way out of it. What do you mean praise? Man, I'm hurt, man. Man, I'm broke, disgusted, and can't be trusted. What you talking about praise your way out of it? See, it's something about that praise that gets God's attention. That makes it. See, if, if, if I'm sick in body, God can deal with that. But at the same time, he, I get my prayer request, God want to hear some praise. See, praise does something to God. Praise does something. It shakes heaven. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise. Psalm is going to tell me, make a joyful noise. Just got a phone call this morning. Somebody's family member died in a tragic accident. Don't get up there talking about make a joyful noise. But God said, as long as you can praise me through the tears. See, God don't mind us crying. He don't mind us grabbing a whole box of tissues. But God said, if you can just give me a little praise in the process, a little praise while you're going through, because I'm going to be the one that's going to bless you. See, late at night when you think you're all alone and everybody else is asleep, God said, I'm there. I'm there with you and your tears and your pillow. And it does not yet appear what it shall be. It's not over until God says it's over. We need to learn how to wait on the Lord. A joyful noise at a sad time. The nerve of them folks in that church, they know I just lost my mama. And now come up in here, they have everybody jumping around praising God. You ever seen somebody like that? They mad because they lost somebody and the whole church supposed to be sad all the time. No, no, don't just pray for me and pray with me. Be sad. I want everybody to have on black. But you don't understand who God is. God is saying, look, just pray with me. I'm going I'm to I'm walk you through this thing. I'm going to get you through this thing if you would just lift me up and praise me. So as we look at Psalm 100 today, let us see if together we can arrive at an understanding as to how we can make a joyful noise at a sad time. And you don't have to be phony with it. Because you know what? Everybody don't praise God the same way. Because you run around and shout hallelujah, you, you ain't fooling me. That's good. That's the way you do that. That's, that's you. That's your personality. But don't forget about grandmama sitting over there in the corner just rocking her head. To God that's praise. Or the sister or the brother sitting over there with tears. Wrote that. For as a man or woman thinketh in his heart, in the heart, so is he or she. So God is saying that you don't have to manufacture or make up no praise. You just praise me the way. Some folks just wave their hand. Hallelujah. And God still receives that as praise. So don't let anybody try to tell you how to manufacture your praise. Because you might have to jump out your seat because you got the report from the doctor that they thought if they gave you the surgery that you wouldn't be able to walk. So you had the surgery and you still walked in the church. There are things that go on in folks' lives that, that this is the place where it's safe. If they do it out on the street, they might get locked up. If you just jump off a trolley and start dancing, somebody going to come by and grab you. But when you with your family in the house of God, where folk are supposed to know how God operates, how he is supernatural. How he does miraculous things. That's why Hebrews 10.25 says, 
Forsake not the assembly of yourselves together. He said, come on in here where you can get what you need. Come on in here where, where there's an opportunity where the gifts are working together so that you can get, so you can be in the atmosphere, so you can be in the environment. Come on and get your fill up because I guarantee you when you leave here, some of the stuff that God allowed you to put on the side is going to try to crop up again. But because you've been here, when you go back, you won't look at it the same way. See, once I've been in service, the mountain don't look the same way when I leave service. As long as I don't sit here and don't say nothing with my arms folded, I want the whole church to know I am mad, I am upset, I am going through. I'm just here. I ain't here to hear no word. I'm here for y'all to see me. Because ain't nobody in my house paying attention to me. I need some folks to see me stand and see what I'm going through. But the psalmist says, number one, we need to make a joyful noise. Even though I might be going through, make a joyful noise. A joyful noise unto who? Unto the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. That's Yahweh. The proper name of the one true God. Knowledge or use of this name implies a personal or covenant relationship. The name pictures God as one who exists or causes existence. So when you make a joyful noise unto the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, you are telling the enemy, I have a relationship. I'm in covenant relationship with my God who is Yahweh. So if you want to come up in here, you got to go through him. And what, what the psalmist is saying, because you have relationships, you ought to be able to somewhere in there make a joyful noise. Your motivation to make the joyful noise is not what you're going through, it's who you belong to. Your motivation to make the joyful noise is not what you're going through, it's who you belong to. See, when you, when you know who you belong to, you give a shout. And you don't have to be in church. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. I tell you, when you pack your lunch... You know, when you, go, when you go to work, when you pack your lunch, pack some Jesus with you. Don't leave home without him. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord all ye lands. And, and then, secondly, he says, serve the Lord with gladness. As a matter of fact, back up, that word joyful means to raise a battle cry, sound a trumpet, blast, a trump, trumpet blast, shout it with triumph and exaltation. Don't be ashamed if you're going through something and God hasn't delivered you from it yet. Still give him praise. Give him a battle cry. Give him a shout out. Make a joyful noise. Thank you, Lord. No, thank you, Lord. Like you're afraid. Then number two, he says, serve the Lord. That means to attend to the Lord or minister to the Lord. Serve the Lord with gladness. That means serve the Lord with delight. That means, God, I know I'm going through, but guess what? I'm going to serve you with, a, with delight. I'm going to serve you with joy. I'm going to serve you with gladness. So number one, make a joyful noise. Number two, serve the Lord with gladness. Then come before his presence. That means to show your face in front of God. Come before his presence with singing. That means a joyful voice and a joyful song. Amen. Don't come in. I'm talking about amen. Me. Speed it up, brother Dennis. Speed it up. You know. You got to. And that's okay. But see, once you get past that song, remember me, something ought to. When you begin to get a picture in your mind of who God is, and, and he's up there in heaven, and he's my daddy, and he's waiting to bless me, and he, he wants to wrap his arms around me, and because of him, what the enemy tried to do to take me out did not take me out. I'm still standing. And somebody had that testimony today. You're still here because God is in your life. The enemy tried to take you out. And you, and you took a stand, and guess what? He tried to go to your children or your spouse. He tried to go to your family. Anybody a witness here that when he can't get you, he tried to get somebody close to you? Or he'll attack your finances or something, or attack your mind, or attack your body, trying to let him know the enemy is highly. But guess what? I'm still going to make a joyful noise. Because if I hold on and hold out, it's going to be all right. So serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. And then, look down at verse 4. They want me to enter into his gates with thanksgiving. That means a thank offering. 
a confession of thankfulness, speaking the excellence of him. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. That means I'm proclaiming the excellence of Yahweh. And be thankful unto him. Now that's deep because I'm going through some stuff, but I've still got to praise God. Now, I'm not trying to fool myself. I'm not trying to deny myself. I'm simply saying he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, and all of my help comes from the Lord. Therefore, no matter where I am, no matter what I am, no matter what I'm going through, he's still worthy of all the praise. Because the last time I checked, the last time I got out of something, I couldn't get out of it. My mama couldn't get me out of it. My daddy couldn't get out of it. My best friend couldn't get me out of it. My psychotherapist couldn't get me out of it. The medication couldn't get me out of it. God got me out of it. How do you know God? I got you out of it because I was at my wit's end. I ain't know what else to do. And he picked me up and that's why he's worthy of a joyful praise. That's why we can make a joyful noise in the midst of it all because he'll never leave us nor forsake us. What blows my mind is trying to receive what he allowed to happen. That messes me up sometimes. Trying to figure out God why this. And we get so consumed with why this we can't even praise him. God, why this? We get so consumed with God, why this? We ain't gonna come to church no more. And what's deep is when you change, when you change your church, think it's better over there. God ain't got nothing to do with that. It has all to do with the fact of who I am in your life. And I, we have a covenant relationship. We have an agreement, which means that I will never leave you nor forsake you. I love you no matter what. I love you unconditionally. Enter to his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. I said, okay. Okay, Psalmist. I like your verse 1 and your verse 2, your verse 4. But why do you want me to do all that? He said, well, go back up to verse 3. And Minister Mitch touched on that. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. Acknowledge who he is in your life, and begin to understand, can't nobody do you like God. Oh, see, that's just something, because once you're on with knowledge and wisdom of who God is, can't nobody mess with you. And see, each victory helps you some other victory to win. So the other stuff I went through, that was lightweight. So now the enemy turned it up, but God said, I'm still here with you. Know ye the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us. That means he got his hands in my life. He got his hands on my life. So I already know that he's God. I know he's Yahweh. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. Every time you buy something, the manufacturer has a degree of responsibility. And see, if that's not enough coverage, there'll be a very, there'll be a lot of people there to sell you an extended protection policy. Ain't right been there yet. No matter what you buy. So you need an extended protection policy. I think I bought something to charge my phone up at Radio Shack. Oh, sir. The thing costs $7.99. Would you like a $3.99 extended protection policy? But see, what God does, God said, with me, I'm always there. You don't need an extended protection policy. He said, said, he said, he said you have not made, I made you, and I'm going to take care of you if you allow me to. See, I'm not going to just going to say, everybody's going to go take care of you. No, no, God said, if you acknowledge, you accept my son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior, I will, in fact, take care of you. And my ways are not your ways, and my thoughts are not your thoughts. So don't get all caught up. He ain't answered my prayer yet. He ain't do this yet. He healed my sister. He ain't healed me yet. God said, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. And all that simply means, if you wait on him and you believe in him, your blessing is going to come. It may not come like Mary came. It may come like David came. But guess what? He has such an array of how he does stuff. Oh, he blows our minds. He blows our minds at what he does. And then he said, I mean, why do you want me to praise him? We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. That means we're part of the flock and he's going to give us a place to graze. We are his people 
and the sheep of his pasture. That means he's going to take care of us. That means that when we can't see, he can see. See, none of us have been there. Let me finish this. I know it's warm in here. The, the heat is working. Amen. <laughs> and then he says, I said, why you want to make a joyful noise at a sad time? You don't know what's going on in my life, man. You don't know what I've been through. I said, I don't look like what I've been through, but you just don't know. God did some stuff, and God laughed at us. What do you mean I don't know? You belong to me. <laughs> I knew it before it came to you. As a matter of fact, I allowed it. I was just trying to teach you, so I'm trying to show you how great, how, how strong you really are in me. And then I wanted to teach you some areas where you need to build up your faith because you thought you were strong there. You thought you had that under control until you went to that Thanksgiving dinner and such and such walked up in there and started talking about your past life. I'm sorry, that's, that's, that's something else. <laughs> that might be something that happened to me. I'm sorry. I, I, went over, I, went over, I went overboard with that. I went overboard. Amen. But all God is trying to say, I am with you. And when it seems insurmountable, when it seems overwhelming, when it seems unreasonable, God said, that's just starting with me. That, he said, I'm so glad you exhausted all of your, of your resources because I've been trying to get your attention. And, and I see I had, to let, I had to let your money run out. I had to let your family's money run out. I had to let, I had to let your coverage run out. I had to let all that stuff run out. So I could be your God. I love you so much that I wanted everything else to get down to zero so I could step up in there. Because I knew as long as I allowed you to have too much stuff, you would never call my name. Anybody in here like me get dependent on stuff and stuff could stop you from praising him and stop you from worshiping him and you think it's you? And God said, when I remove all the stuff, here I am. Now. You see me. Now you'll come talk to me. Now you'll come in my presence. I said, Psalm, that's why I make a joyful noise at a sad time. He said, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endure to all generations. He said, why? Because the Lord is good. His mercy, that means his unfailing love, his devotion, his kindness is based on a covenant relationship. And his truth and his faithfulness, steadiness, his trustworthiness endure to all generations. He said, I never run out. Anybody got some friends that's not your friends no more because you ran out? You didn't run out on them. You just ran out of stuff. You got tired of supporting them. Oh. And then you found out that was really the friendship was all based on what you could give them. And not based on y'all was tight, you know, y'all was all like that. Because when you got money, you got lots of friends come around your door. But when your money's gone, and God said, I'm not like that. I'm not a fair weather friend. And God said, all you got to do is praise me. And I'll mess around and, and I'll send my angels down there to take care of you. Just, just, just praise me. Just just give me the glory and give me the honor and watch what I do. And I said, but well, wait a minute. What's this whole thing about praise? Turn to Psalm 1611. Psalm 16, verse 11. And praise God at a sad time. Man, she must be crazy. I just lost my job. It's time to make a joyful noise. But God said, if you, if you had a joyful noise when you had a job, and I gave it to you, uh, if you had a joyful noise when I, when I gave you the job, then if you don't have one, still have a joyful noise because I'm going to still take care of you. Look at Psalm 16, verse 11. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is the fullness of what? And at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. You see, when you read the psalm, the psalm is saying, look, he's worthy of all the praise. But then when you get to Psalm 22, verse 3, that's where, that's where the enemy don't want you to praise him. Because you're going to find out why people will say, praise your way through it or praise your way out of it. Look at Psalm 22, verse 3. Look what it says. But thou art holy, O thou, talking to God, that inhabitest, that inhabitest the praises of Israel. So, we are his children, just like Israel. The Israelites are his children. 
These promises belong to us. But the word inhabitus in the Hebrew means God dwells in our praise. God stays in our praise. God gets settled in our praise. And God lives in our praise. That's why the enemy does not want you to praise him. But that's why the psalmist said, make a joyful noise unto the Lord because when you praise him, God shows up. When you praise him, God dwells in your praise. And when he dwells where you are in your praise, then something's got to change. See, when God stays in your praise, something else got to change. Why? Because if I got all these problems and I praise God and God shows up, God is so great. Some of these problems got to go to make room for my God. Oh, understand what I'm saying. He inhabits my praise. So if I praise him while I'm going through, when God lives in my praise, all that other stuff got to move out the way because God is so great. He needs a lot of room. Oh my. That's why folks say praise your way through. He inhabits this. He dwells in. He stays. In, 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 in one word in Hebrew said, he settles in my. That's why I will bless the Lord at all times. Yeah, stuff ain't right. But guess what? If I want him to come nearby, I'll just praise him. God, I'm going through, but you're worthy of all the. God, I don't understand why you got me going through all this, but you're worthy of all the praise. You know, we used to say, I don't know. I don't know why this happened to my kid. Them kids down the street, baby's kids. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I had a witness today. You know what we talking about. Them kids down the street ain't no good. They ain't no good. God, why didn't you put that on them? God said, I want to use you as a billboard, as a spokesperson. I want to use you for an advertisement for me. But I want to let you, before we close, I want to let you know today, if you give him the praise. And don't worry about how you praise him. Don't worry about how it comes out. Just praise him. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. You want God to show up? Don't wait till Sunday. Stuff jump off Monday, especially on your job. Go get you, do like I used to do. Get you, get you a stall. It's your stall in the bathroom. That's your stall. You clean it up. I remember mean, one time I cleaned the stall up and somebody come out, don't you go in there. I, I'll be dad blasted. I just cleaned it up. You, want, you go call the maintenance man, that's mine. But uh, you got to you gotta go ahead and praise him. And when you're in the media sometimes, see, you can praise him from your heart. Your heart can be talking to God and they talking stuff in the media and your heart, is, and then God will show up. Because all of a sudden you, you, you begin to pay attention again and the whole meeting took a turn. Because he inhabits. Don't you be somewhere and think you're about ready to get in trouble and you start calling on the... Think about that when you leave here today. He inhabits. He inhabits the praises of Israel. He inhabits the praises of his people. So you give God a shout out. And you know, okay, let me not push you. Because some of us, we know we shoot and we dignify and you know, if you're on your job, you don't want to get in trouble, get written up. You won't get a pink slip, you know what I mean? You can, you can go in the corner, you know, say, excuse me, I need to uh, take a restroom break. Hallelujah, Jesus. You can, you can be quiet with it. You ain't got to get all loud. You can be quiet with it. Lord, in the name of Jesus, they don't know you about ready to show up in there and do something in this place. Do the same thing with your spouse, acting foolish. Say, Jesus. <laughs> oh, y'all just praise him. Praise him. You don't have to like what you're going through. Just praise him. Why? God said, don't praise me for the cancer. Praise me for the fact I'm a healer. You broke? Don't praise me because you broke. Praise me because I, the, the earth is the Lord and the fullness era. A cattle. See, God, you got to turn that thing around. God said, when you praise me, you're not praising me for the problem. You're praising me because I am your Savior. And I can help you with the problem. And I can solve that problem. And I can heal your body. And I can deliver you. And I can protect you. And I can take care of you. And I can love you where you are to get you to where you need to be. You ain't got to dress up for me. You ain't got to go through all of this. 
make a joyful noise. A joyful noise at a sad time. Yeah, I learned how to make a joyful noise at a sad time because I don't want to stay sad. A lot of times we don't understand what God is doing, but guess what? Just praise him. If you trust him, praise him. You trust everybody else? Yes, we do. How many of y'all saw the money in the bank for your paycheck this Friday? When did you get paid? How many of you went and saw it? Before you, you checked in Monday and said, before I work any hours for you, sir, ma'am, take me to the vault. I want to see that you can cover my pay. We trust everybody else. The weatherman says it's going to rain. We will miss the trolley or the bus to go back and get our umbrella or to get whatever we want. But when God says it's going to rain, they laugh at Noah. When God says he's going to hear you, you can you, God? When God says he's going to give you a job, you, when God says he's going to fix your relationship, we love to doubt God. You know why? Because it's spiritual. We have to learn how to be spiritual. And when you come to Christ, we're spiritual. We're not natural. And God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Yes, he did. We're not worthy, but through the blood of Jesus we are. The Bible says if I was still messed up, God loved me so much that he sent Jesus to die for me. Wow. Think about that. You got some family members that, that leave you high and dry. But Jesus saw me in my mess. And God said, what are we going to do? Jesus said, look, can't nobody pay the price that you're asking but me. And I love creation enough that I'll go down. And I will redeem them back to you. And that's exactly what he did. So what I want you to do, don't praise him empty. Praise who you know. Amen. Don't praise an empty God. Praise the God that you know. Yahweh. The existed one. The one that causes to exist. The capital L-O-R-D. The covenant relationship God. That's who you made the relationship with. Amen. You know how you go someplace, you know, I, I, no, I don't want to talk to your representative. I want to talk to their head. You got to do that sometimes. And they start giving you the run around. Who's over you? And the person who's going to start talking stuff, who's over you? Eventually you won't get to the top. But with, through Jesus Christ, we go straight to the top. Straight to the top. And he died, but he resurrected that we might have life and have it more abundantly. But if you don't remember anything else from the day, he inhabits the praises of his people. That means he dwells in your praise. So when you praise him, don't mess with folks they be praising the Lord. Amen. Just get out the way. Some folk wild with it. That's cool. Yeah, amen. Some folk cool with it. But whatever you do, it's all right. As long as you praising God. But God is saying, if you just praise me, because I want your praise. I'm seeking those that will worship me, worship me in spirit and in truth. And God says, see, and when you praise him, the enemy gets to say, oh, my God. They done called him the heavyweights. Oh, Lord. Oh, my God. You know, it's not like that Maytag repair person never gets a call. Because the Maytag never breaks down. Up in heaven, the angels saying, will y'all call him, please, so I can get me some work? Will y'all stop trying to do stuff on your own so I can get me some work? My wings are out of action. I need to flutter. If y'all just come. God would dispatch somebody for you. That's how much he loves us. And don't worry about trying to be perfect. He already knows us. He already knows what, what we can handle. Everybody's thinking, no, I'll join church when I get perfect. Well, you'll never join. You're, you'll never join. Perfection is not within your realm. It's not within our realm. But when God speaks to you and God is drawing you unto him, God is saying to you, look, come on, be my child and praise me. And make room because I'm getting ready to live in your praise. You don't even have to add an extra room on your house for God to move in with you. Just praise him. I'll, I'll, I'll dwell right in your praise. Let us all stand. Amen. Hallelujah. A joyful noise at a sad time.